Hello students, good morning all of you. This is your Prabhakar and welcome to our channel Dawn of Chemistry. Hope all of you are happy and healthy in your homes. Stay home, stay safe. In this video, I am going to explain about the electrolysis. In a previous video, we have discussed about the introduction to the electrochemistry and in this video, we are going to discuss about the electrolysis. This complete video will cover the what is electrolysis, what are active electrodes, what are inert electrodes, what happens when molten solution is electrolyzed, what happens when aqueous solution is electrolyzed, when a solution is having more than one type of ion, which ion comes and deposited at the electrodes first, what are the, that is nothing but the preferential deposition theory and the next thing is <clears throat> what are the Faraday first law of electrolysis and what are the second law of electrolysis? What are the different problems we can encounter based on this electrolysis concept? Let's get into the details of this thing. The name itself indicates it is electrolysis. So let us see what is this electrolysis meaning. We know very well. Lysis meaning is breakdown or lysis anywhere you take means lysis means breaking. Electro means electricity. So the process of breakdown of any substance by passing electricity through it is nothing but the electrolysis. You can define electrolysis as the phenomena of breakdown of any substance into the elements or into a compound by passing electricity through it is called as the electrolysis. The important electrolysis reactions we know is electrolysis of water. These are the common electrolysis phenomena we encounter in our plus one and plus two syllabus. Next electrolysis of cryolite electrolysis of concentrated H2SO4 to produce hydrogen peroxide Kolb electrolysis and Nelson cell this Nelson cell is used for the preparation of NaOH and purification of copper by electrolysis. So these are the different electrolysis techniques what we will encounter in the plus 1 and plus 2 syllabus. What is this electrolysis? What are the principles of electrolysis? What will be happening during this electrolysis? In which kind of instruments will be carrying out this electrolysis? Thing means C. Basically, these electrolysis reactions are carried out in electrolytic cell. Basically, electrolysis is carried out in electrolytic cell. Let us see what is this electrolytic cell and what are the different electrodes present in them. Electrolytic cell is a vessel which contains electrodes at the bottom, which contains the electrode may be small, may be large also that depends on the type of electrolysis we are taking these electrodes are two electrodes are present one is cathode and other one is anode here if you see cathode will be negatively charged and anode will be positively charged i already i have explained this thing how to identify the charges present in them cathode will be negatively charged and anode will be positively charged in this electrolytic cell we can put the electrolyte 
in this thing you can use electro light in some books they will put electrolysis diagram like this ma that is also correct only like this they will keep and they will connect this to the external circuit and they will make it this is positive and this is negative cathode and then anode so like this electrolytic cell will be present in this electrolytic cell we will take the electrolyte and we will pass the electricity into this thing. so whenever you pass electricity through this thing always remember to the cathode to the cathode cations will deposit at anode anions will deposit so at cathode cations will deposit at anode anions will be depositing let us take for example an electrolyte ab i will take let us take it is dissociated as a plus and then b minus always remember whenever you are doing electrolysis we will use dc current so whenever you use a dc current then only current will flow through it electrolysis will takes place but if you use ac current will simply it will pass from one to another there will be no electrolysis so be careful with that so cathode cation will come the cation a plus takes up the electron and forms a metal or non metal it's not always metal it can be sometimes non metal also at anode b minus will come that forms b by losing one electron maybe it is a metal or non metal it can be anything so always see at cathode what is happening means at cathode it is a taking electron and it is forming a metal so this reaction is a reduction reaction here this is donating electron and hence this is oxidation reaction you can easily understand from this oxidation reaction means electrons are lost so here you see cathode what happens at cathode means yesterday also i have discussed electrons leave from the cathode current enters into solution current enter into solution through cathode electrons sorry ma electron enters into solution through cathode current leaves solution through leave solution at cathode here you see electron leave solution at anode electron leaves solution at anode and current enter solution at anode so always remember the current flow and electron flow will be in opposite direction always electrons move from anode to cathode that's why electron leave solution and reaches this solution through the cathode but current leave solution at cathode and enters into the solution at the anode will be coming so always remember electrolysis can be done in electrolytic cell whenever you take any electrolyte that contains the cations and then anions those cations and anions when you pass electricity they comes to the cathode and they comes to the anode respectively and deposit at the electrodes let me tell you some examples nacl fused what ions are there 
Na plus and then Cl minus which comes to cathode and which comes to anode means Na plus will go to the cathode, Cl minus will go to the anode and what reaction you can expect means Na plus plus electron gives Na Cl minus gives half Cl2 plus one electron will be coming like this we can understand this thing. And if you see KCl, when you take KCl means it forms K plus and then Cl minus. Potassium comes to cathode and forms K plus plus one electron gives K. Cl minus reaches anode and forms of Cl2 plus one electron. Like this we can have n number of compounds and what happens when they are electrolyzed means we can discuss. Clear? So that is what is electrolysis? What are the different examples we are having for electrolysis? What is electrolytic cell? When we take two different or any electrolyte and pass electricity, what reaction takes place at cathode and what reaction takes place at the anode. So like this we can study about the introduction to the electrolysis. After this thing, here when we are electrolyzing the solution, the electrodes are there. Here how many types of electrodes are present? And when you are taking electrolyte, how many types of electrolytes are present? That thing we will be discussing further. Alright. Let's move on. Let us see electrodes. How many types of electrodes are present? Let us see electrodes. Basically, the electrodes we can classify into two types that is, active electrodes and inert electrodes. Active electrodes and then inert electrodes. What are these active electrodes and inert electrodes means? Active, the name itself indicates. Active electrodes means electrodes participate in electrolysis, participate in electrolysis so that means uh, they will undergo dissolution or they will undergo deposition that kind of thing nothing but the participation inert electrodes means does not involve in electrolysis so simply speaking if they undergo corrosion or if they undergo deterioration in the electrolysis we are called as the active electrodes and if they don't undergo any deterioration or corrosion or any breakage will not be taking place or any reactivity is not taking place we call them as inert electrodes so in which condition we call them as active electrode and which condition we call it as inert electrode see if metal used as electrode if metal used as electrode is same as the metal ion in electrolyte if metal used as electrode is the same as the metal ion present in the electrolyte then we call it as active electrode let us take an example for this thing if you are electrolyzing zinc sulfate by using zinc electrode if you are electrolyzing copper sulfate solution by using copper electrode if you are electrolyzing hcl solution by using 
hydrogen electrode then these are known as the active electrodes what about the inert electrodes means if metal used as electrode is below the metal ion in electrochemical series so if metal used as electrode is below the metal ion in electrochemical series as i have told you told you already ma in my previous video i have explained what is electrochemical series and i have given a mnemonic also to understand the electrochemical series once you go to that thing means you can understand otherwise in further uh, in few minutes i will be explaining that also see example copper sulfate is electrolyzed by platinum electrodes zinc sulfate is electrolyzed by copper electrodes mostly the inert electrodes are platinum and then graphite electrodes we will consider them as inert electrodes so we have to understand this thing so in exams they will not mention you whether it is inert electrode or active electrode you have to understand from the solution whether it will be inert electrode or active electrode <clears throat> so be careful for example if you carry out this kind of electrolysis let us say copper sulfate solution is electrolyzed by zinc electrode will electrolysis takes place anyone you can do see when copper sulfate and zinc are there the reaction takes place and it forms zinc sulfate and then copper like that this kind of uh, no electrolysis so whenever you electrolyze copper sulfate solution with a zinc metal means between them chemical reaction takes place since between them chemical reaction takes place we will not use this kind of electrode so the metals above the particular metal ion in the activity series cannot be used as electrodes why they cannot be used as electrodes means there will be reaction between them and hence we should not use them as electrodes so like this electrodes are two types active electrodes and then inert electrodes <clears throat> active electrodes will participate in the electrolysis that means they undergo dissolution in inert electrodes there will be no dissolution or deposition in the particular case let's move to the next thing electrolytes electrolytes basically the electrolytes we can classify three categories ma based on the problem purpose i am classifying them fused electrolytes aqueous electrolytes and finally mixed electrolytes there are fused electrolytes aqueous electrolytes and then mixed electrolytes fused electrolytes means only one cation and only cation and anion of salt will be present so fused electrolyte means only cation and anion of the salt will be present if you take NaCl electrolyte means it contains only sodium ion and then chloride ion if you take copper sulfate means it will contain only copper ion and then sulfate ion will be present they are known as the fused electrolyte these are also known as molten electrolytes molten electrolytes are fused electrolytes if you take aqueous electrolytes aqueous electrolytes means you know very well it is a combination of electrolyte plus water we know very well water will be having h plus ions and then oh minus ions electrolyte will be having the cation and then anion along with cation and anion 
along with cation and anion H plus and OH minus ion will be present along with cation and with anion H plus and OH minus ion will be present this is known as the aqueous electrolyte and finally you see mixed electrolyte if more than one electrolyte if more than one electrolyte is present then it is known as a mixed electrolyte if you take kcl and nacl that is a mixed electrolyte if you take kno3 and then NaBr that is also a mixed electrolyte like this we can classify the electrolytes into different categories fused electrolytes aqueous electrolytes and then mixed electrolytes in these cases you should understand very clearly that you should understand very clearly that they will ask you whenever aqueous solution of NaCl electrolyzed with see why I am telling this is important means they will say aqueous NaCl is electrolyzed with sodium electrodes if they say aqueous NaCl is electrolyzed with sodium electrodes so what you have to understand means first you have to see Aqueous NaCl contains H plus ions, OH minus ions, Na plus ions, and then Cl minus ions are present. And then it is electrolyzed with the sodium electrode, means it will be active electrode. So these things should be very careful and you have to understand immediately. So that's why I'm elaborating this thing and I'm explaining you. So what are active electrodes, what are inert electrodes, in which kind of condition we should not use, which kind of electrodes and when it comes to the electrolytes, how many types of electrolytes we can have, molten, fused, aqueous and then mixed electrolytes, right. After this thing, whenever we are electrolyzing the solution, what are the reactions taking place at the electrodes we will be discussing, go through this. Hope you have gone. So let us see what are the products of electrolysis. To identify which will come and deposit first at the electrodes. Normally as I have told already when one cation and one anion is present means there is no competition at all. Always the cation comes to the cathode and always anion comes to the anode and respective reactions takes place. If more than one cation and more than one anion is present, what are the reactions taking place? Let us see. To understand that thing, preferential deposition theory is proposed. Preferential deposition theory. So this explains that whenever a solution is electrolyzed and it is having more than one cation or more than one anion is present always the ions will deposit according to their deposition potential for any particular ion more is the deposition potential means it will come and deposit first so that's why deposition potential is directly proportional to standard 
रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल ऑफ मेटल आयन सो सी हियर डिपोजिशन पोटेंशियल डिपोजिशन कैपेसिटी is directly proportional to deposition potential deposition capacity is directly proportional to the deposition potential and the deposition potential is directly proportional to the srp values what are these srp values means already i told you based on electrochemical series it will be coming in the electrochemical series the ions present is lithium potassium calcium sodium magnesium aluminum zinc chromium iron cadmium nickel tin lead hydrogen mercury silver copper and then iron will come this is the increasing order of srp values this one you can check in my video ma of electrochemical series in that thing i have clearly explained this thing so as the srp values increases their deposition potential also increases so that's why whenever a mixture is having any of this ion then what will happen means whatever the ion is present on this side that will be depositing first so srp values so deposition capacity simply you see let us take a solution a solution a is there a solution b a solution c and a solution d is there for your understanding purpose i am taking this one solution a is having potassium ions and then copper ions are there first which comes to cathode means copper deposit if a solution is having zinc ions and then fe2 plus ions and then az plus ions which will come and deposit first means silver ions will come and deposit there if a solution is having magnesium ions h plus ions and then copper ions which comes and deposit first means copper ions will come and deposit first so copper greater than hydrogen greater than magnesium in this case silver greater than iron greater than zinc will be coming if a solution is having in the solution these are the cations present ma tin is present lead is present chromium is present which will deposit first among them means lead will deposit lead will deposit after that chromium will be present after that tin will be present so you know here tin will be present after that chromium will come and deposit here like this by using preferential deposition theory whatever the cation is present with the highest deposition potential that will come and deposit at the electrode first and gets reduced to the particular metal ion always remember ma whenever in a solution their cations are present there is no problem with cations because simply they will take the electrons and they will produce the respective metals but when it comes to the anions case in anions the deposition potential order is this will come so4 2 minus less than no3 minus less than f minus less than oh minus less than cl minus less than br minus less than i minus will be coming you can take here from sulfate ion when it is concentrated as 2 oh 2 minus will come when it is moderate it liberates sulfur dioxide gas when it is dilute means nothing will be coming so when concentrated sulfuric acid is there it produces peroxy disulfate ion will come in moderate concentration sulfur dioxide will be liberated 
NO3 will produce the nitrogen dioxide gas, fluorine will liberate the fluorine gas, oxygen gas, chlorine gas, bromine gas and then iodine gas will be coming. Whenever these respective ions moves to the respective electrodes, these are the reactions taking place. Understand this one ma? Fluorine will be having the lower deposition potential than compared to the OH minus. This is very very important corner. Based on that corner, once they have asked the question in your competitive examinations, if they want to twist the question, means they will answer here. Yeah. So deposition potential order. Since the deposition potential order is present, means the Deposition capacity also will be same thing. Let us take for example different solutions we are taking in a solution A, solution B, solution C and solution D. In these cases solution A is having OH minus, Cl minus and then I minus. Solution B is having SO4 2 minus and OH minus. Solution C is having F minus, OH minus and then Cl minus and solution D is having OH minus and NO3 minus. What is the deposition order means among these I minus greater than Cl minus greater than OH minus. Among these OH minus greater than SO4 2 minus. Among these Cl minus greater than OH minus greater than F minus will come. In this case OH minus greater than NO3 minus will be coming like this. Whenever electricity is passed through a solution having more than one type of cation and more than one type of anion, the cations and anions will deposit at electrode in the respective order of their deposition potential. So like this, whenever they give you any solution, not fused case. In fused case only one cation and one anion will be present. In aqueous case and in case of the mixed electrolytes only, these things will be depending upon and based on this thing. You have to remember this order. Ma. See, if you remember the electrochemical series, I posted the video, go through that thing immediately. In now one minute you can remember this series. That much easy I made it there. And in case of the anions, you can simply remember the ions order. Here you see fluorine, halogens are present in the regular order. In between them, OH minus is there. Sulfate ion and NO3 minus ion you take means sulfate ion is complex. That's why it will go very slowly. The friction force and so many things, viscosity of the solution and all will learn oppose the movement of these ions so to over because of that opposition this order will be coming like this we can identify in a solution whenever more than one cation and more than one anion is there which will come and deposit at the particular electrodes correct we have discussed what is electrode what is electrolysis what are the electrodes we are having what are the electrolytes we are having when we are electrolyzing them what are the products we can expect also we have discussed now let us get into the what happens when you electrolyze a solution by using inert electrode what happens when you electrolyze a solution by using the active electrodes take down these things Oh, we have noted down these things. So I will explain electrolysis of active electrodes and inert electrodes. Inert electrodes. At inert electrodes what happens means there will be no changes. Respective 
cations and anions come to electrode and they get oxidized or reduced there will be no complexity in case of the inert electrodes in the inert electrodes respective cations and anions according to their deposition potential order they will come to the electrodes and they will deposit at the particular electrodes but when it comes to the active electrodes this is where you should be very careful <clears throat> when it comes to active electrodes in active electrodes always at anode in active electrodes always at anode dissolution of electrode takes place so always at the anode dissolution of the electrode takes place so whenever you take anything and electrolyze means at anode the dissolution of metal takes place means m gives mn plus plus anions in electrons means normal cases the anions will come to the electrode and they will deposit right but in case of active electrodes the metal itself will dissolve at cathode cathode deposition of ions takes place at cathode deposition of ions takes place as per their deposition potentials cathode at cathode deposition of ions takes place as per their deposition potential this is what you have to remember now <clears throat> always in active electrodes case only anode will dissolve and regular case all will be same only let me tell you one example let us take aqueous nacl is electrolyzed by using sodium electrodes and then platinum electrodes molten nacl is electrolyzed by using sodium electrodes and then platinum electrodes what are the different reactions taking place in them let us see so aqueous nacl is electrolyzed by using the sodium electrode and then platinum electrode molten nacl is electrolyzed by using the sodium and then platinum so see here sodium is used means it is active electrode platinum is used means it is inert electrode this is active electrodes and this will be inert electrode so as i told you active electrode anode case what reaction you can expect means na gives na plus plus one electron if you see aqueous nacl what are the ions available means h plus ions oh minus ions na plus ions and then cl minus ions in a molten case na plus and then cl minus ions are available so be careful with these things so anode case i told you active case means it will dissolve at cathode which comes first oh minus and cl minus is there means cl minus comes and forms half cl2 and one electron when you take this one anode case sorry ma this is not the thing cathode among h plus and then na plus h plus comes h plus plus one electron gives half h2 will become so reduction takes place according to the cations based on their deposition they will come and deposit in case of platinum cl minus gives half cl2 plus one electron and at cathode you can have h plus plus one electron give half h2 will come <clears throat> next you see molten nacl whenever you electrolyze this molten nacl anode by using active electrode simple 
Na gives Na plus plus one electron at cathode. There is no chance. Only sodium has to come. So Na plus plus one electron gives Na. When you take this one at anode, if you take anode means Cl minus gives half Cl two plus one electron at cathode. What you can expect the sodium will come in the deposit. And a plus plus one electron gives, and it will come like this. We should be very careful when it is in case of the active electrode. This is a very important thing. It seems to be simple only, but actually it is very complicated. Understanding whether it is active electrode or not electrode that is the major task. And after that, identifying which ion comes and deposited at electrode that is one more thing you should be cautious about. <coughs> So this is the thing. At inert electrodes, case means respective cations and anions will come and deposit. Active electrodes, case means always anode will dissolve, and deposition will be based on the ions available. Go through this. I will give one more example. You will get clarity on the differences between them. <coughs> right. Let's move on to the next thing. I will not rub that NaCl problem. You can have comparison with copper sulfate, so you will find the difference in that. Let us take aqueous copper sulfate. Is electrolyzed with copper electrode and then platinum electrode. And one more thing is molten copper sulfate is electrolyzed with copper and then platinum. Let us see the differences between them. Aqueous copper sulfate will have H plus ions, Cu two plus ions, OH minus ions, and then SO four two minus. Ions. Molten copper sulfate will have only Cu two plus ions and then SO four two minus ions. Let us see what happens at anode. Since it is active electrode, copper will dissolve. So Cu gives Cu two plus plus two electrons and at cathode, which will deposit first among copper and hydrogen means. Copper is present below the hydrogen in the activity series, so that's why Cu two plus plus two electrons gives Cu. When you use platinum at anode, OH minus will come and it will liberate the half O two. And at cathode, you can have Cu two plus plus two electrons gives Cu. Here the difference lies. At cathode and anode case, dissolution of anode takes place and deposition of cathode takes place. If you do this reaction, this can be used in the electro refining of copper rod. In the electro refining of copper rod, they will take impure copper rod and they will take a pure copper rod here. So as the reaction is going on, whatever the copper is present, that will dissolve from anode and deposit at the cathode. That is the thing. And you take molten copper sulfate on electrolysis. What happens means anode, as I have told you, Cu gives Cu two plus plus two electrons. Wherever there is active electrode, always remember that particular thing will come and dissolve in the case. Here you see sodium is deposited, but here what happens is at cathode, since it is in the bottom, Cu two plus plus two electrons gives Cu will come. Whenever you take platinum, this will be inert type. If you use platinum or any carbon rod, use or graphite rod, use it will be a inert. So at anode. What you can expect means SO four two minus will come and it will form S two O eight two minus and at cathode you can take Cu two plus plus two electrons gives Cu will come like this. We can explain the products formation during the electrolysis of a particular compound. So is it clear, ma? Hope you have all understood this thing. 
what is cathode and what is anode what are the basic terminologies in electrolysis when more than one cation and one anion is present which will come in deposit first how many types of electrodes are present how to understand the electrolysis phenomena go through this that's for this video man we have discussed what is electrolytic cell what is cathode and what is anode what are the reactions taking place at cathode and the anode and how many types of electrodes are there what are active electrodes and what are the inert electrodes what are the different electrolytes we can have molten electrolytes aqueous electrolytes and then <clears throat> mixed electrolytes what are the reactions taking place at the cathode and then anode during the electrolysis these are all the qualitative things regarding this electrolysis in the next part this is the part one qualitative electrolysis i have discussed here quantitative that means how much current we have to pass how much time we have to pass how much compounds are formed at the and those things are done in part two i will be uploading thank you if you are new to this channel subscribe to my channel like the video and share the video with your friends so they also get benefited thank you